Yo, what's good everyone? The Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro was recently announced and Google was kind enough to send over a Pixel 6 Pro for me to review. By now, you've probably all seen a ton of review videos, so I'm not gonna go into the tech specs too much. Instead, I'm gonna take the Pixel 6 Pro onto the streets of New York City to do some street photography and show you guys how this phone performs in real life shooting conditions. As a photographer, I would normally carry my a7R4 along with a couple of lenses. But for this video, I'm gonna be shooting exclusively with the Pixel 6 Pro. This way, I can thoroughly test out the camera hardware and some of those software features. So there will be a ton of photos and videos, as well as social media examples where I compare the quality between Snapchat, Instagram, and the native camera app. And after the POV segment, we will be diving into Lightroom to pixel peep at some of these images as well. So definitely stick around until the end where I share some of the positive and negative aspects of using the Pixel 6 Pro as my daily driver. And as you're watching this video, let me know in the comments below, how do you think the Pixel 6 Pro is performing? Yo, what's good everyone? So as you can see, today's format is a bit different. Right now, I am shooting with the Google Pixel 6 Pro uh, with the front camera. So you can see how this quality looks and hopefully you can hear my voice clear enough. Um, I have my POV camera and my mic. So as I'm going around the city, taking you know street photography, taking some photos with the Pixel 6 Pro, you guys can see it all happen in real time. Unfortunately, it was way too noisy in the city and you could barely hear my voice in the mic. So instead, I'm going to voice over this POV footage so it's nice and clear. This is a great street for some warm up shots and to test out the telephoto lens to see what kind of detail we can pull out of the buildings in the distance. Not only is the 4X telephoto lens able to isolate One World Trade Center, but all of the other buildings also look larger due to the compression of this lens. I noticed the hang shoes from the street lamp, and it's something that I also want to try and isolate and frame by itself. So I move over to the side of the street and still using the 4X telephoto, capture this shot. The HDR was able to render the white clouds and blue sky beautifully. Everything looks really natural not over sharpened or oversaturated. Now that I'm walking past the light pole, I wanted to take another shot of the building without any obstructions in front. The photo walk just started, but I'm already amazed by how sharp this 4X telephoto lens is. On the next street corner, I noticed this school bus covered in graffiti. I really like how the light is shining right on the bus. And for the composition, the idea is to shoot it at an angle, so you can also see some of the graffiti on the construction fence in front. By default, everything looked a bit too bright on my screen, so I'm adjusting the exposure slider and making the image darker overall. As I was adjusting these settings, this guy walked into frame pushing these boxes. The timing was perfect, so I quickly snapped a couple of shots using the main lens. I move forward a couple of steps to reframe this composition. Here you focus on the front of the bus, but you also see more of that construction graffiti. A person rode by on a bike and I captured this shot. The position of the biker wasn't great for this composition. However, I did like how quickly the pixel was able to respond and snap this shot with no shutter lag. While I was waiting for another subject to walk through the frame, I decided to test out the social media integration. So here's some examples shooting with Instagram, Snapchat, and the native camera app. Then finally, I saw this person walk into frame and I quickly captured this image. This composition feels a lot more balanced compared to the previous image of the biker. A couple of blocks later, this yellow storefront across the street caught my attention. I thought this would be a great opportunity to test out the 2X camera, especially with all of the textures on the wall. The 2X camera is just a crop of the main center, so it's not a dedicated camera on this phone. So I thought that these images would not look as good because it's just a crop. The biker is perfectly captured with no motion blur at all. It doesn't look like it's a portion taken of the sensor. And for this next shot, I used the 4X telephoto. This composition is pretty boring, but I just really like shooting with this lens. 
the tight framing and subject isolation along with the nice sharpness just make it a really fun lens to shoot with. This next street was a really great place to test out the action pan mode. There are a ton of cars and bikers going by. For this first shot, I tried to isolate the biker and I wasn't sure if the phone was able to capture him because of all the cars. But I was really surprised to see that the pixel was able to figure out the biker was the main subject. We'll take a closer look at these action pan shots later on in Lightroom. Then I tried another action pan with this garbage truck and this shot came out looking really cool. The front of the truck is nice and sharp and as you move toward the back, it starts looking slightly blurry. All of the motion blur in the background looks really natural. So when this action pan mode works, it works really well. Now here's where I encountered an issue with the camera system. I tried to capture the biker going by again with action pan, but this time the entire screen froze. I wasn't able to change lenses or interact with the camera UI at all. To be fair, action pan is still in beta. So hopefully these bugs can be ironed out by the time most people get their devices. This next area has really great light. The bridge casts this harsh shadow across the ground. And when you expose for the highlights, it creates a really dramatic look where the background just fades to black. The pixel wants to apply strong HDR and lift those shadows. But for a scene like this, that HDR works against the shot that I'm trying to create. So once again, I'm trying to overcome that by adjusting the sliders on screen and lowering the exposure and lowering that shadow slider. But even after making those manual adjustments, you can see that the shadows are still too bright for my liking. Now, generally, I think people wouldn't mind this too much because you want to see some detail in the shadows. But for these shots, I really wanted a specific look. So this is where I hope that Google can implement manual controls so that if you want to take a more creative shot, you are able to. Thankfully, there is the option to shoot both RAW and JPEG. So I'm able to take the RAW files and edit them myself to apply my own style. Next, I moved on to this fruit market under the bridge. This is a great area to test out the wide angle lens as well as some of the low light capabilities. Although it's daytime out, there isn't a lot of light in this market. The ultra wide is awesome here. Because of the tight quarters, you can still capture a lot of the scene like the stone arches and the fruit stands along with the people in the market. Now this shot was really interesting because the person on the left walking into the frame has a bit of motion blur. This is normal and expected due to the low light conditions and slower shutter speed. However, the person facing the camera looks really clear. Now I'm not 100% sure, but this may be due to that unblur feature where the camera tries to make the faces clear even though there may be motion blur in the rest of the image. As I'm exiting the market, this beam of light under the bridge caught my attention. I love how sharp that line is. And if you've seen some of my other street photography POV videos, you might recognize this spot. So standing across the street, I am once again using that 4X telephoto and adjusting the exposure slider and shadow slider to make the overall scene darker and moodier. For almost every shot, I found myself using these sliders. So I really like how easy they are to access and the fact that your settings stay no matter if you're using the wide, regular or telephoto lens makes it a good shooting experience. And in the same area, I decided to do another video comparison test. So we have Instagram, Snapchat, and the native camera app side by side. If you want to check out more social media examples, follow me on Instagram, where you'll be able to see stories taken directly with the Pixel 6 Pro. On the other side of the bridge, this building caught my attention. The light was hitting only the right side of this building and the corner facing me was like a sharp edge between light and dark. Here are a couple of shots I took in this location, and I really like the silhouetted people along with the split composition using the light and darkness. 
And since the sun was right in front of me, I decided to shoot a couple of videos to test the flaring of the cameras. And I'm still seeing a lot of great contrast in the shadows, in the highlights. And this is a really difficult area for the phone to expose for just because of how much dynamic range it needs. So I think the video HDR is actually doing a really good job here. As I'm waiting to cross the street, I decided to once again test out the action pan mode. This mode is so fun to use, and I think it works really well for cars because it's an easy shape for the device to identify. As I'm making my way onto the bridge, I thought that this was a great area to test out the cinematic pan mode. I'm really surprised by how smooth everything looks, even though my hands were kind of shaky and I was just walking naturally up this path. There is significant light flare coming in through the trees, but I think it adds to that cinematic feel. From the top of the bridge, I took a couple of different shots because this is a unique vantage point where you're shooting above ground level. And here's another example video using cinematic pan. Except this time I'm trying to shoot through the fence and you can see how the pixel struggles to lock focus even though I tapped on the buildings. The focus shifts are really distracting and honestly it kind of ruined this video. This reminded me to test out the portrait mode. So here's an example of the selfie portrait mode using the front wide angle camera. I will have more portrait mode examples using the rear cameras later on in this video. Shooting through this hole in the fence, I decided to compare the social media apps once again. By this point, I had been shooting for about three hours, taking tons of photos and videos. The device felt a bit warm, but nothing unusual. And the screen was plenty bright and visible under direct sunlight even though it may be hard for you guys to see the screen in the POV footage. And finally, here are some more portrait mode examples. You can see that the cutout is definitely noticeable and the background looks too fake in some of these shots. Thankfully, you can go into the editing settings and adjust the level of blur after you take the shot to make it look more realistic. Now let's jump into Lightroom and pixel peep at some of these images along with some night shots. Let's start off by taking a closer look at some of these long exposure and action pan shots. This long exposure waterfall looks really good and even zooming in, I'm really impressed with how well the pixel was able to blur out the water and keep the leaves clear. Of course, it's not perfect and some of the leaves did also get blurry, but unless you're zooming in like this, you wouldn't really notice. This long exposure shot of the river also looks really nice. I especially liked how the pixel was able to cut out the elements like the rocks and the trees and keep those sharp. And the motion of the water also looks really natural. This action pan shot was able to keep the person on the bike clear while adding motion blur to the rest of the scene. But as I mentioned in the POV footage, there is some weird artifacting in the motion blur. And when you take a closer look at the bike, you can see that the pixel wasn't able to cut it out cleanly. This next example is also a bit strange because both the person and the van look like they're in focus, even though only the person should have been the subject. I think this action pan shot of the person riding the motorcycle is one of the better examples. The subject looks really clear and the cutout looks pretty good as well. All right, now let's move on to some nice shots. In this image of the Roosevelt Island tram, I used the 4X telephoto lens and I was really not impressed with this shot. The entire image looked way too warm and lacked any color and contrast. One interesting thing to point out is the unique light flares that you'll find in bright lights when you're shooting with the 4X telephoto. This is due to the orientation of that lens. And while it looks okay in some images, it can be distracting in others, like this next one. When you have a lot of lights grouped together, the light flare kind of merges together and creates a strange look. The texture in the buildings also look a bit muddy, but once again, there's very little noise. I think Google denoised these nice shots a bit too much, and I'd rather see a bit more noise and more detail. 
For this shot, I'm testing out the ultra wide and everything looks really good. Even checking the extreme corners shows very little softness and no smearing of the details. However, like the other images, this one also looks a bit warm. This image was taken using the 4X telephoto and I'm really surprised with the low light performance here. I expected the details to get really soft, but instead everything looks really clear. You can even make out the features on the face of the statue. Now this next image was taken using the main camera and the pixel did a great job here. All of the colors looked really natural and the HDR was perfect. None of the bright billboards were blown out and you can still see details in the darker areas. Of course, there was plenty of light coming in from those billboards, so the image isn't grainy at all. And here is an example of nighttime video. And lastly, let's take a closer look at some portrait mode shots. Honestly, I was kind of let down by the portrait mode. As you can see in this example, the pixel wasn't able to cleanly cut me out of the image. It even messed up around simple shapes like my hat and my mask. Here is another example where the background by the edge of my face isn't blurred out correctly. On a positive note, I do like how it rendered the out of focus lights and that looks pretty realistic. Okay, so I hope you guys liked this video. I spent a ton of time doing these tests and putting this video together. So if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna support my channel, please subscribe. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the camera performance, especially that 4X telephoto. And the software features like Action Pan and Long Exposure are really fun and easy to use. Overall, the HDR and denoising algorithm looks to be a bit too aggressive. And although the adjustment sliders on screen are intuitive and easy to use, I would still like to see full manual controls. It's clear that the hardware is there, but for once, I think it's time for the software to catch up. Now, using this device as my daily driver has kind of been a weird experience. Uh, now, personally, I really like smaller devices and the Pixel 6 Pro is a huge phone. Maybe I wouldn't mind it so much if the battery life was better, but I was only getting around four to five hours of screen on time. Granted, I do take a ton of photos and videos, so my usage may be a bit different compared to yours. Speaking of the screen, I love the 120 Hertz fast refresh rate. It makes the whole experience feel so much smoother. However, the display does look a bit warm and there's no way to adjust the color temperature. And while the screen does get pretty bright, the adaptive brightness could use some more fine tuning. It jumps around between brightness levels instead of switching it gradually. And one last note about the screen. This may seem weird, but as I'm tapping and touching on the display, it feels almost hollow, like I'm not interacting with a solid pane of glass even though it is. It's hard to describe, but if any of you guys have the Pixel 6 Pro, do you also feel the same way? But even with all those negatives, I still find myself using this phone more than I thought, and I really do enjoy using it. The Google experience is complete and well integrated into this device. The amazing haptics make me not want to put this device down. And lastly, that social media integration with the cameras make me want to shoot more with it. With future updates, I hope that Google can keep improving this device. All right, well, that's it for this video. And if you guys already have the Pixel 6 series, what do you guys think? What has your experience been so far? And if you're skipping this one, then let me know what else are you getting instead? And if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram so you can be one of the first to see additional content that didn't make it into this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.